Sometimes you deploy your Power BI dashboards and then uh, your users end up complaining that they are slow or the visualization are taking too long to render. Um, in this video, we are going to show you how to use a Microsoft provided tool called Performance Analyzer that you can be able to troubleshoot the visuals and be able to identify what's really going on. And with that, let's go ahead and get to work. So here we have our dashboard um, showing equipment effectiveness throughout a baking process. We want to ensure that the responsiveness of the dashboard is optimal so that our users don't have to complain that it takes a long time for them to get the insights for the process uh, while they are interacting with that uh, with our dashboard here. So as I navigate through this dashboard, I can see that my data is changing as expected, uh, but I do want to capture out what exactly is going on behind the scene between um, for these visualizations here and ensure that the performance is great so to do that i'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my power bi desktop i'm gonna go ahead and get it opened here it's the same dashboard that we do have uh, on the other side and the same interaction will be in place because it's what we've published to the cloud uh, but what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go ahead and open our performance um, performance analyzer and then I'm gonna start doing the recording so that I capture every piece of this uh, this dashboard and what's really going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the recording here and then I'll interact with my dashboard uh, the same way. And you can see that we are actually capturing this data as we progress and we can see there it's taking its sweet time for it to be able to refresh the data that we do have. So those are some of the improvements that we do want to capture so that we can know how to go ahead and improve our dashboard, uh, whether it's the filters, whether it's um, whatever pieces that you have within your dashboard. So on my pane here, we can see that we've captured quite a bit of data and I can sort this data as well. Uh, so that at least I can see if I want to see exactly what's happening. I can see there that my uh, OEE net, that's where most of the time is being taken based on the milliseconds here. And so if I go to performance, uh, which is one of the ones that we saw, uh, it, it's taking its sweet time. I can be able to copy the ducks that we have behind the scene. Uh, and once I copy that, I can utilize a tool like, for instance, Duck Studio, come and uh, dump that uh, DAX that we have here and run it. Uh, by running it, I can be able to kind of get the results of what's really going on within this um, process here. But this is now looking at it more from DAX perspective. I want to look at it now, uh, not really from the DAX perspective, but the entire process, the visuals themselves, how the visuals are responding and all that. That's where now things start uh, becoming a little bit different because uh, even though I can be able to see uh, this based on the visual display and how long it's taking, I want to be able to have a collective measure rather than having to go through each and every one of these to capture that process. The next thing that I will need to do is I need to go ahead and export this. And what we're going to actually do is utilize what we call a performance analyzer. This is a visualization that has actually been provided by Microsoft. And I'll link it down to the um, in more information on this video here so that you can have access to it as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, export the data that we have and then we're going to use this tool here to actually analyze all the visualizations that we have within that uh, dashboard. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go ahead and do an export and this export here is going to be a JSON file so I'm just going to go ahead and call this my JSON4 here and I'll go ahead and save that guy and then now I'm going to go back to my performance analyzer here. Uh, let's go ahead and open this guy. And once we have it open, um, the key important piece here is to change the parameters. So by default, uh, this parameter here points to um, like a temp file, but I'm gonna go ahead and change mine here so that it can actually point to my JSON uh, 4, the one that we just generated. And that's coming again from transform and then change the parameter that you have there. So go ahead and do that. And then because we've changed the parameter, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And we'll look at this file uh, in general um, on what's really going on. So this file here, this is just the introduction page that kind of tells you what we have. Uh, and then we do have some pages throughout here. So one of them is the metadata. I'm gonna go in there and we can see that I am looking at the file that I just generated here. So 
kind of tells you if you have data issues. So I can see here that I do actually have data issues with my file or with my dashboard where there's duplicate IDs. Uh, so that's one of the pieces that I would want to go and fix. And then we can see some of the statistics that are actually generated by uh, my dashboard there. So yeah, different event types, user uh, actions, uh, visual update counts. Uh, and then if we have any change data capture, uh, we'll look at that as well. And then these are different events that are actually happening and I can sort those to actually see what is taking most of the time as far as the events events are concerned. So in this case, my data view transform under report canvas, that's where most of my time is going. Similar situation uh, pretty much on the report canvas for the data sync, visual updates and what have you. So that kind of gives you a good look of what's really going on from the perspective of the event counts. Then I'm going to go ahead and look at the visual summary. So this is another important one here uh, because it's actually telling me what's really going on with my visual. So here I have the fast status, uh, total time, dax time uh, to render it, uh, time directly, time direct query and what have you. So again, I can be able to sort this out. And once I sort it out, I can I have the the view of what's really taking time um, from rendering perspective. Uh, so we see here that the uh, the cookie numbers, um, this visual here is the one that's taking most of the time. So I can go out and look at that uh, specific, specific visual and determine what can I be able to do to improve the performance so that my users are not having to uh, wait. This is another one that we did see on the other side, which is the EE, uh, the OEE net. Uh, so that's another one that's taking quite a bit of time. So we can utilize that as well uh, here to go see uh, what we can do to improve that. And then from change, change detection summary, I don't have any on this one here, but this will, um, when you have data that's loading using direct query uh, and you have it enabled to detect data changes, this is where that would show. Uh, but again, in this case, mine is doing an import. I'm not doing a direct query. So hence the reason why I don't have any data here. Then the next one that we have here is the event tree. Uh, where you can actually be able to see all the processes that are happening within um, each step. So if let's say for instance, I come here and I look for, we know for a fact that we are having some issues with this visual here, the, this one. So I can go ahead and select it. And then I can see how the events or the events of what's going on within that visual. So it's uh, how it's kind of loading and how it generates its total time. So we see that uh, from this perspective. So again, that's giving you that uh, view there. And you can be able to select, uh, you can be able to have uh, some of the slices that we do have here where you can see if it's report canvas, uh, the DSC, the AS, um, which is the analysis services. Uh, so you can be able to see that uh, because remember again, uh, from Power BI perspective, the file that's being generated here, it's using the analysis service, services engine for it to be able to render that file. So the next one that we have is a timeline, which will also be very important from your uh, perspective of analyzing what's really going on. Uh, this one here, uh, this takes time to render. So be patient with it uh, because it's actually a calculated table. Uh, so if I look at my fields on this side here, uh, you see that that's actually this is a calculated table. So it's going to take time because it's trying to render every data that we have out there. Uh, but it's going to give you the same kind of uh, visualization and hopefully we'll be able to see it here in just a few. Um, then from the bottom here, uh, from the bottom here, uh, depending on what selection or what action label that you have here, I can be able to see what DAX has actually been generated. So that's one of the cool things about all this uh, because the query text here can be, let's go and pick that uh, filter one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy here. Uh, so that tells me again the timeline and I need to find one that has a query on it. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of filtering here. Let's go ahead and look at this from DSC perspective. And I believe that should give me uh, some that do have uh, query text in them. Okay, so there we go. So similar DAX query, that's similar to what we had collected on the other side. So I can use this query here and I see the duration that it's taking and either go improve my DAX or uh, determine what I need to do uh, as far as my DAX is concerned to improve the performance. And as you can see, this one is here is still rendering. So hopefully it will be done here in just a few. 
Uh, but again, I can utilize this um, and be able to go out to either Dark Studio or what have you to be able to improve my Dark queries uh, so that our performance can be much better. So I'm gonna pause the video until this guy loads here and then uh, we can look at kind of results of what we get back from it. All right, now we see our table has completed here. Uh, again, like I mentioned, this one here is a calculator table, so it takes a good amount of time to render, so just be aware of that. Uh, but the good thing about this one here is that it will give you the beginning and the end of each and every step of what's going on so that at least you can be able to see the timeline of what's uh, what's happening. So you can again sort your things or sort your visuals, sort your content that you have here with rank uh, markers. Uh, you want of course to see the beginning and the end, uh, the component name, uh, so that be it uh, analysis service, DSC or report canvas. Uh, and then the slicer, uh, whatever we have there, um, the beginning and the end, so the previous edge, the root edge, and the duration. So it gives you that ability to also see um, how the progression is going throughout the uh, throughout the loading of your Power BI and the loading of your visualizations. So I'm hoping this will be helpful for someone out there, uh, so that um, when you're troubleshooting. Uh, your visualization you don't have to only look at things from power uh, from um, dax perspective but also from the visuals that you have if you have custom visuals uh, how are they behaving uh, when you have um uh, custom visuals that let's say for instance are being driven by either Python or uh, any other um, custom code that we have. Um, how is it being rendered and how is it producing its results? So that uh, becomes an ideal tool. This becomes an ideal tool uh, for you to be able to troubleshoot all that. Uh, thank you once again and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next um, episode.